Welcome to another video. So I purchased this amplifier um, and it says that ATG monoblock subwoofer amplifier 2400 watts as is four parts amp powers on but goes into protect mode unsure of what the issue is so let's find the issue so we will remove the back cover And we will politely remove this warranty sticker. There it is. There's your warranty. Although your warranty is probably void once they realize the reason why it burned up. So they probably deny your warranty claim anyways. So what do we have? We have a class D amplifier. Your output inductor, this is the very first sign that you do actually have a class D amplifier, which you can see right here is the class D drive circuit, which you will find that is very common in like the Planet Audio uh, some of the older sound stream amps use this very particular setup to drive the output. And what I can point out first thing is this amplifier has failed from vibration damage. As you can see, there's one, two legs that have been snapped off right at the board typically do from vibration again you'll see in my previous videos I have stated that vibration damage is one of the primary causes of amplifier failure um, second to overloading or exceeding the recommended output So now we will check the power supply transistors, which you're going to find right in the back. And they're labeled as SWP3205. So these are going to be the pretty standard, the 3205 transistors. So we're just going to check to see. Um, it does look like it's possible. Just charging up the capacitors here. There we go. Um, just to verify that the power supply is still functional, not shorted. And the rectifiers, uh, you'll find over here your common 1620s. So there's 16 amp, 200 volt rectifiers. So I would suspect that the power supply is good okay picking up from where I left off so as we found this is a class D amplifier um, with vibration damage so I'd like to point out the build quality of this amplifier is it looks like all the transistors that got installed have this little bend right by the board which is looks like it was intentionally done to help prevent fatigue of the transistor legs but if you notice on the output transistors they don't have that particular bend in place which is why these snapped in the center so these 3205 
power supply transistors, I think I'm going to replace regardless, just due to the fact of how they have been installed. And they have I think they're gonna have a high potential to break the transistor legs. Even the voltage regulators have that specific bend right at the board. So on the outputs, the 31N20Ds, you'll see on the data sheet here that the 31N20D has roughly a 30 amp uh, current capability at 20 degrees Celsius. So now I will go ahead and disassemble this and remove the board from the heat sink. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the transistors loose, the output transistors loose. Go ahead and cut these output transistors out of the circuit here. And that will allow me to uh, fire up the power supply, make sure the SG3525 is still functional. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up my 12 volts and we will power up this power supply. All right, so we're going to hook up this power supply. So some people ask, when you have it out of the case where you have the end plates off, how do you know what's positive and negative? Well, you can usually always tell the positive because it'll go through the fuses first. So you'll find the terminal, you'll find the fuse block here, and you will flip the board over. So here's your fuses, which tells you that this screw is your 12 volt screw. So 12 volts remote ground. So let's get that hooked up. And then we will also hook up the scope. Um, I use a isolated power supply, so I have to ground my scope to the negative. Ground, sometimes I can find the best point here to ground that on, which what I do is I follow the trace of the ground, which comes over to the diode here, the reverse polarity protection diode. And then we're going to uh, switch screens. And we're going to head on over to the power supply. So again, you will see that we have the oscilloscope in the upper left hand corner. And we will So I got to put a fuse in it first. I just put a temporary fuse in. Remember, my current su my power supply is limited to two amps. Uh, if I haven't, if you haven't watched my previous videos where I explain the power supply that I use, I do use a 12 volt laptop power supply going through a foot switch that's limited to two amps. So even if I have a 20 amp fuse, then that really doesn't matter because I am limited to two amps through the power supply. So we will go ahead and locate the LEDs on these, which is on the opposite side. I'm going to turn all my potentiometers counterclockwise, which is your gain, base, boost, low pass, um, all of those. I set them all counterclockwise. And then what I do is I cycle my power supply just to make sure that I have a green light 
I do have, you'll see here, let me get my scope set up properly for you. Okay, so we're going to cycle the power on the foot switch to the power supply. And you'll see in the upper left hand corner the oscilloscope. You'll see the drive building. And I do get a green light showing that I have a good power supply built. So you'll see the power supply drive does look fantastic still. So the failure of the output did not affect the power supply, which is good. That's what I was looking for is making sure that the SG3525 was still good. The power supply drive transistors were still good. And we have our voltage regulators doing their job. Uh, right at 16 volts positive and 14.4 uh, on the negative which the voltage regulators power your preamp section so uh, this particular drive does need an input signal to get the low drive the low side drive functional so what I did is I I have a 50 Hertz signal Go into the input. Um, I'll power the amplifier back up and make sure that we. Yep, green light on the power on the uh, on the face here. Green light showing that we have good power and we have no protection issues. So then, what we can do is we can probe the gate drives of the high side and low side. So you will see that we do have a 50 hertz drive on swinging to the high side and we do have a 50 hertz drive swinging on the low side so that tells me that the output drive did survive these do typically have heating issues uh, you'll see uh, there's fans over the top of these typically or on the side depending on which amplifier you have like the sound streams have a fan that blow against these on a vertical riser card so yes the drive is functional both high and low so it just looks like we need to replace the output transistors um, I will replace the power supply transistors I will replace the voltage regulators and I will replace the rectifiers just to rectify the issue that I see on how they bent the legs which would cause fatigue um, if this was installed in a high vibration issue. So I will be replacing the rail capacitors. These are the output capacitors. These are the rail capacitors. Your shunt for overcurrent protection. At first I thought these were output capacitors, but they're not. These are your output capacitors. These are your rail capacitors coming off of the rectifiers. All right, so I'm going to, I don't have any of the 31 and 20s on hand, so I'll have to order those. I do have everything else on hand and we will come back to this. Thank you for watching. All right, so come to find out that these 31 and 20 Ds have reached their end of life. So these are really, you can't get these for, through Mauser. Um, so I'm gonna have to do some digging on finding some original 31 and 20 Ds. Or if any of you guys out there have any good ideas for um, substitutes for the 31 and 20 Ds, uh, please leave that down below and let me know what you uh, have come up with for a good substitute for those 31 and 20 Ds. Um, and until I can get some new ones in, we will see you then.